Currently, uh, what we see that is a uh, developmental pattern that is sporangia. We discuss few example uh, like land fern, few examples for the aquatic fern. Again, we discuss some example of the spores which is developed from the more than one cell surrogate involved, and now they form a sporangia. And one important unique question we already discussed. Equisetum, also called as the horse tail, and these are the unique example for living genus, only living genus. Okay, so these are the number. If you are talking about development and pattern, these are the number four, which is come under the leaf category. Now we start with the spore. We discuss the sporangia also. Yeah. So number fifth. Now after this point, we are talking about the number fifth structure. Eight minutes. I'll just check. If we cover that part, yeah, ये part हो गया. Homosporous condition, heterosporous condition. Just one second. Yeah, this is the Okay, so these are the fourth part with respect to leaf. Yeah, this part is over. Now we are talking about next part, number fifth part, sporangia. Fourth part, leaf part, that is over, and we already discussed one point. Whatever the example starting from the S, from algae means from bacteria that is Pyrrolina up to uh, Pteridophyta. Jitne bhi example S se start ho rahe, you have to revise that again and again because. Complication hoga. There is a confusion between example which is specially start from the S. After the leaf part, now we are talking about the number fifth condition, number fifth part that is sporangia. So we are talking about some common features, and out of common feature, first of all we are talking about the typical structure of the sporangia, number fifth. And you know very well, sporangia basically these are the diploid in nature, two end condition hoga. Inside the sporangia, there is a presence of spore mother cell. Inside the sporangia, spore mother cells are present, and the ploidy level of the spore mother cell again these are the diploid in nature. Now the spore mother cell undergo the process of sporic meiosis. So it is undergo the process of the sporic meiosis. Just one second. <clears throat> yeah. So spore mother cell, it is undergo the process of meiosis. That meiosis pattern is a sporic meiosis, reductional division, and after the reductional division. There is a formation of meiospore and ploidy level of the meiospore, basically haploid in nature. Now, very unique question coming from meiospore because these are the two different types of meiospore get formed from meiospore. So we are talking about there is a formation of the two different types of meiospore. Number one, homosporous, and the number second, heterosporous. So one question. And these are the neat favorite part from the Pteridophyta. So first of all, we are talking about first condition, that is homosporous condition. Homosporous. And when you talk about the homo homosporous, it means that all spores are similar type. Homo homo means what? Same type. Similar type. Sporous means what? Spore. So what is meaning of the homosporous? Simple meaning. Similar. Type of spore or same type of spore. So these are the one condition because up till we have seen that whenever we are talking about in case of the bryophyta, in case of bryophyta, homo spores are present. If you saw the yesterday DPPs, a quick question will be there. In case of the bryophyta, homo sporous conditions are present. Sporophytic body. To produce these spores after the sporic meiosis, all these spores these are the similar type. But in case of the pteridophyta, we have to study two different types of the meiospore after reductional division. One is homosporous, and in case of the homosporous, 
whatever the spores get produced all the spores they are similar type okay and such homosporous condition in case of the pteridophyta these are the major one these are the major condition homosporous condition and in case of the homosporous condition please write down the example in this category we are taking example land fern we are taking example for the land fern and i hope you remember humne last class mein example dekhe the for the land fern number 1 that is pteris number second dryopteris and the number third adentum also called as the walking fern adentum so whenever we are talking about homosporous homosporous it is very much common in land fern and what is meaning of the homosporous after the reductional division whatever the spores get produced all the spores they are morphologically similar and example for the homosporous pteris dryopteris and the adentum okay now another condition in few pteridophyta there is a formation of the heterosporous also there is a formation of which condition heterosporous and what is meaning of the heterosporous hetero means what two different spores get form heterosporous simple meaning is two different spores they get form such type of this condition these are called as the heterosporous condition and in this point of view <coughs> clearly we are talking about examples yahan pe examples honge aquatic fern so we are taking few examples of the aquatic fern so under the aquatic fern you know very well first example that is salvinia s stand for the salvinia again the smallest aquatic fern which is involved in nitrogen fixation that is azolla and the third one one unique example that is marilia so salvinia azolla and the marilia all these are the example of the aquatic fern please remember these three examples it is belonging to aquatic fern but along with that we are taking a fourth example those are showing heterosporous and these are the neat 2013 question and that unique example that is selanginella again start from the s hum aage dekhenge dryopteris and the selanginella these are the very unique example in case of the pteridophyta and whatever the question they get designed the design question around the dryopteris and the selanginella so here we are talking about a very unique example in case of the selanginella selanginella inside the selanginella also there is a presence of the heterosporous condition two different spores are present but please remember selanginella it is not a fern ye fern category se belong nahi karta they don't have ornamental leaves they don't have large size leaf okay so selanginella they are example of heterosporous yes heterosporous present but please make sure that selanginella it is not a fern because humne yahan pe clearly bol diya aquatic fern heterosporous condition it is mostly common in case of the aquatic fern so salvinia azolla and the marilia all these three example of the aquatic fern but selanginella selanginella they are showing heterosporous condition but it is not example of fern clear this point is clear ye bahut important hai you have to remember three example for the homosporous and four example for the heterosporous out of that two just remember any one any one remember homosporous or remember heterosporous so now what about agar aapko out of four option if you know three options so ultimately you can find out what is the fourth one which is the correct and which was the non correct so smartly study karna hai okay smart study no need to remember all this example just remember only any three aquatic or uh, land fern so ye fix a point homosporous and the heterosporous condition yeah this point is clear so we are talking about fifth category sporangia sporangia they undergo the reductional division they produce the meiospore and in case of the pteridophyta 
टू टाइप्स ऑफ मियोस्पोर आर प्रेजेंट होमोस्पोर भी होंगे विच इज द मोस्ट कॉमन बट अलॉन्ग विदोस्पोर सल्सो प्रेजेंट चल नेक्स्ट कैटेगरी नंबर सिक्स एंड हियर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ यूनिक स्ट्रक्चर स्ट्रोबिलस जहां से क्वेश्चन बनता है सो आफ्टर दिस फोरेंजिया नंबर सिक्स कैरेक्टरी फीचर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द स्ट्रोबिलस and this strobilus structure also called as the cone structure okay in case of this strobilus or cone simply we are taking the first example which is a very much common s stand for cilanginella c cilanginella you have to remember this example because it bahut unique hai okay cilanginella and another example equisetum also called as the horse tail which is a very unique only living genus so we are talking about equisetum also called as the horse tail yeah so now we are talking about what is the meaning of this strobilus or what is the meaning of the cone structure now now uh, just last class we also discussed in case of the pteridophyta sporophyll its word is very common sporophylls right sporophyll means what as a leaf leaf who consist of sporangia a leaf who consist of this sporangia and that sporangia further they produce this spores homospore or heterospore so now we are taking the common condition that is sporophyll and please remember sporophyll condition it is present only in few member of pteridophyta just one second there something is a problem with my pen Ma'am, background. When you spoke, there is just some noise. Like, okay, Pratyusha, got it better. Okay. Now, okay, Pratyusha, do you feel any uh, uh, cracky sound or bad sound? Yes. Now, sound is okay. No, it's now it's good. Yeah. Okay. So now we are talking about the sporophyll, and what is meaning of the sporophyll? Sporophyll means the leaf who consists of the sporangia. That's why we are talking about the typical structure of the sporophyll. now what happen this sporophyll basically they get aggregate this sporophyll basically they are showing aggregation they get together they get aggregate and now what happen after the aggregation they get aggregate and they form a compact structure and finally a complex a compact structure get form and such type of this compact structure complex structure simply these are called as strobilus or these are also called as the cone so please remember strobilus and the cone it is present in few member it is not present in all pteridophyta it is present in few members of pteridophyta and that few members we discussed the two example number one is cilanginella and the another one that is equisetum so strobilus cone sporophyll present hoga that sporophyll which is present on the branch on the leafy branch they form a compact structure above that compact structure finally they produce a uh, one compact structure one cone shaped structure and that cone shaped structure simply these are called as this strobilus structure uh in front of you if you have any ncert book so please take a one photo and share in chat box something the cone shaped structure we'll draw the structure but still if you have please share in chat box i want image of uh, cilanginella or equisetum kisi ka bhi chalega okay chalo so these are the number 6 part that is strobilus cone shaped structure which is present in few members of pteridophyta now next part number 7 we are talking about 
sex organ so definitely whenever we are talking about the sex organ we are talking about the pteridophyta so such kind of the pteridophyta basically sex organ they are multicellular and as well as they are jacketed jacketed means what protective cells are present simple straight forward meaning okay chalo vedant yeah good so if you see the chat box hum aage draw karenge these are the example of the equis atom because equis atom it is called as a horse tail so it is look like a horse tail like structure long elongated structure and if you see on the tip yahan pe strobilus structure present hai strobilus basically these are the also called as the cone because shape is like a cone and the strobilus nothing but compact structure of sporophyll which is present in very few members of pteridophyta okay we'll draw that structure later yeah so now we are talking about the sex organ sex organ basically there is a presence of the multicellular plus jacketed you know very well such sex organ they are divided into two category number one that is male gamete and this male gamete simply these are called as the anthridium and these anthridium definitely these are motile one now another one female gamete female gamete basically these are the non motile and such female gamete these are simply called as the archegonium so bryophyta and in case of the pteridophyta this portion is similar yahan pe koi change nahi hai so these are the similar and whenever we are talking about the female gamete ultimately female gamete these are the non motile okay यहाँ पे भी सब कुछ सेम प्रोसेस होगा लाइक इन साइड दॉटर मेल गैमिट एंड फीमेल गैमिट डिफ्यूज विथ ईच अदर सोनाली ओके ओके सोनाली को now it's better <clears throat> finish patch now it's better vedam sonali it's better or it's bad still mhm nine okay okay so please immediately text me if you feel something bad sound yeah that's fine it's better okay so thank you so we are talking about the sex organ very simple yahan se question nahi banega number 8 we are talking about the part of fertilization and fertilization part also it is exactly similar to bryophyta water required chemotactic movement formation of the zygote embryo and the sporophytic body so quickly we are talking about that part that is fertilization and for the fertilization definitely water is required as well as entire body of male gamete showing the movement towards the female that movement basically it is called as the chemotactic movement 
सो आई थिंक वी सॉल दस डी पी पी वहां पे बिग क्वेश्चन यू विल गेट ऑलरेडी यू फाउंड दट इज कीमो टेक्टिक मूवमेंट विच इज अ वेरी मच कॉमन इन केस ऑफ ब्रायो एंड द टेरिडो फाइटर सो नॉर्मली वॉट हैपन सिंपली वी आर टेकिंग द फ्लो चार्ट बिकॉज कोई रॉकेट साइंस नहीं है दीज आर दी मेल गैमिट मेल गैमिट डिफ्यूज विथ एक मिनट प्लीज होल्ड yeah okay sound is clear so male gamete now they fused with the female gamete and now what happened after the fusion definitely there is a formation of the zygote embryo then sporophytic body so all process similar screen is uh, lagging actually it's loading quite late some seconds locate variations thoda sa patient ko to swas swas will join late hmm what about the land bryophytes uh, vedant even in case of the land bryophytes also they required water because without water no fertilization okay algae bryophyta pteridophyta all they required water for the fertilization so water chahiye chahiye if no water there is a no there is a no completion of the life cycle okay okay yeah. so now male gamete and the female gamete both the gamete after the fusion now they produce the zygote Ploidy level of the zygote that is diploid. Zygote undergo the further division, growth, and development. They produce the diploid embryo. Now, after the embryo, now there is a formation of the body that is sporophytic body, and that sporophytic body again these are the diploid in nature. So, if you observe this condition, whenever we are talking about life cycle, so definitely in case of the endophyta. this part because we already discuss about endophyta who is dominant sporophytic body is dominant so on the basis of that we are talking about these are showing life cycle diplo haplontic life cycle which life cycle pattern diplo haplontic life cycle pattern because diploid stage these are the dominant again spore mother cell undergo this sporic meiosis Spore mother cell undergo this sporic meiosis. So definitely, when we are talking about the meiosis pattern, so these are the showing sporic meiosis. So these are the second point. Got it, Satyusha? Sound is okay now. Mm -hmm. Special birthday, happy birthday, dear. I wish definitely you will confirm you are sick in medicine. Yeah. So, chalo, Doctor Pratyusha will continue the further part. So, diplo haplontic life cycle hai, and as well as these are showing the sporic meiosis. Third one. which is a very common in case of bryo as well as the pterido alternation of generation alternation of generation that is sporophytic it is convert into gametophytic gametophytic they develop into sporophytic so sporo to gameto gameto to sporo so there is a alternation of generation so 
three unique question diplo haplontic life cycle sporic meiosis and the alternation of generation so these are the very much common point with respect to uh, pteridophyta clear yeah this point is clear everyone so these are the some common features with respect to pteridophyta we start from the habitat and we aim with fertilization and the life cycle that okay so next part we are talking about classes of the pteridophyta and we have to discuss only two point only two point hum pura study nahi kar rahe what is the leaf pattern what is the reproduction pattern no we are talking only only and only two point which is related to sporangium which is related to spore that's it so next part please divide your page into four section we are talking about classes of pteridophyta like silopsida lycopsia spinopsida and pteridopsida and we are taking only two point sare points hum nahi le rahe we are talking only about only and only exam point of view so please divide your page into four section okay so divide your page into total four sections because now we are talking about classes of pteridophyta and we are taking only unique part pura research in ekatre padenge because that is a best of all so first of all we are talking about the first class which is independent to one because you know very well whenever we are writing when we start from the left hand side that will represent the primitive position and when you stop with right hand side that is only present the advanced position so on the basis of that first class we are talking about p silent silopsida silopsida because opsida these are the suffix for the classes opsida so first one first class primitive one silopsida number second lycopsida lycopsida number third anopsida and the last one pteridopsida which is the most advanced one pteridopsida hmm. opsida so these are the four basic classes which is belonging to pteridophyta here we are talking about a very unique point and yahan pe hum baat kare first point there is a presence of this sporangia because we already discuss about when we talk about the pteridophyta sporangia that is sporophyll these are the very unique structure the leaf it is not a normal leaf this leaf it is consist of this sporangia so we have to try to understand entire information with respect to sporangia point of view so first of all here we are talking about the first point with respect to sporangia so yes in case of this 
synopsida, the pituitary structure that is sporangia, the sporangia structure is present. Eva, when we are talking about the lycopsida, sporangia structure is present. Even in case of this, spinopsida, sporangia structure is present. And in, even in case of the pteroxida, sporangia structures are present. So in each and every structure, sporangia is present. So now we are talking about exactly position. Where is present? Hoga? When we are talking about the first part, that is silopsida, in case of the silopsida, such sporangia present on leaf tip area or leaf axil area. So where these are the present? Sporangia plus for the present, present on the leaf tip. Now, whenever we are talking about in place of the lycopsida, this lycopsida, this sporangia, it is present on sporophyll. So these are the present on sporophyll. And you know very well, whenever we are talking about such type of this sporangia, where it is present on the leaf, they form a compact structure. And simply we can say that there is a formation of a typical structure that is strobilus. So definitely here we mention strobilus or pore. Where these are the present? We already discussed this part. Sporophyll, they are showing the compact structure. And that compact structure, simply these are called as the strobilus. And such strobilus or the cone structure, which is present in lycopsida. Okay? So please underline this word. Similarly, here we are talking about same information. Sporangia present on sporophyll. And that sporophyll form a compact structure simply called as the strobilus. So similarly, same information in case of the synopsida. Yeah, okay. So sound is okay. <clears throat> sound okay. Okay, Patricia. There is also some problem with the screen is lagging again and again. Yeah. So basically on sporophyll, definitely we are talking about where these are the present. There is typical structure that is pobilus. And that strobular structure simply these are called as the cone structure. Similarly, here we are talking about sporangia. That sporangia is present on the leaf. That specific type of the leaf that is called as the sporophyll. Sporophyll, they form a compact structure. And again, there is a presence of a typical structure that is strobilus. So please remember this point. Where do these strobilus structures are present? In two classes. Number one, lycopsida, and the number second, that is spinopsida. And under this spinopsida, we will try to understand one example that is equisetum, also called as the horse tail, which is the only and only living genus among the subclasses. So here, in this point, under the synopsida, we are taking example living genus, that is equisetum, also called as the horse tail. which is come under spin synopsida category. Now, when we are talking about last class, that sporangia, so basically one condition, sporangia might be possible, they present on lower leaf. So they are present on the lower leaf. 
one condition and the another condition they are present on present on sac like structure and that sac like structure simply these are called as sporocar that sac like structure simply these are called as this sporocar so on this point of view you have to just remember one thing sporangia structure present in all but here we have to focus only one part where this probulus is present so remember probulus it is a very unique structure which is present only in few members one we discussed us about these are the present in sylangella as well as it is present in case of the equisetum okay and here we are taking one example which is belonging to lycopsida where this probulus structure is present and that example that is sylangella so two examples lycopsida class sylangella example where probulus structure is present synopsida class example equisetum where this probulus structure is present that's it you have to remember all of this two middle part Okay, done. Done. Please start. Any doubt? We are talking only two points. Okay, that's it. So any doubt? Any doubt? Should I continue next part? Yes. Sure. Very good. Now we are talking about last point about the homospore and the heterospore. But it's not that clear. Now whenever we are talking about in case of the silopsida, see silopsida first class, which is a very primitive. So obviously, whenever we are talking about the primitive part, only and only there is the presence of the similar types of these spores. So please write down here: there is a formation of the homosporous. Formation of the homosporous spores are present. Where only in case of the silopsida. When you compare this point with lycopsida, so lycopsida is having two types of spores: homo and well as the hetero. So clearly, we are talking about in case of the lycopsida, there is a presence of the homosporous spores, and as well as there is a presence of heterosporous spores. Homo plus hetero, both are present. So quickly, we are talking about examples also. Under the homosporous, we are taking one example, lycopodium. So obviously, it is belonging to lycopsida. Example: The common form of it is lycopodia. So write down one example under the form of pora. Lycopodia. It is belonging to lycopsida and having the form of pora spore. And the another example for the heterospora, just we discuss sylangella. Very unique. And this question is already asked. So sylangella, they produce these probulous structure. And as well as they consist of the heterosporous condition. Third class, spinocida. Inside this spinocida, again only one type of spores are present. That is homosporous. So there is a no need to remember example. And yeah, got it, got it. I write down the information. Please complete the writing part. Then I will explain.
Writing part is done. Sound is okay now. Sound is okay. Okay. So uh, I'll explain these two points because we are talking about the class and we are talking about only these two points. First of all, we are talking about the Pegasus Fighter. Pegasus Fighter is very unique because it is the first successful successful plant, first successful land plant, and as well as it is the first vascular plant. When we are talking about the classes, it is divided into four classes. Oxida, oxida, these are the suffix which is specifically used for the to represent the class. So first one that is silo oxida, number second like oxida, number third spin oxida, and the most advanced that is ferro oxida. When we are talking, we are taking only two characteristic features. That is sporangia, which is a part of the dominant body, which is a part of the sporophyll body. So in all categories, sporangia is present. But now what happens? Look, positions are different. Out of the two classes, under the lycopsida and under the synopsida, these are the two classes where strobular structure is present. Cone-shaped structures are present. And what is the meaning of the strobular? On the teeth, sporophyll, a specific type of the leaf who consists of the sporangia, they get aggregate. And after the aggregation, they form a compact structure. And that compact structure simply these are called as the strobular. So we know that strobular structure is not present in all pteridophyta. It is present in only few members of the pteridophyta. And we explain two examples: Selanginella and the number second, Equisetum. Right? So Selanginella it is belonging to Lycopsida class, and the Equisetum it is belonging to Spinopsida class. So one question from this point: where the strobular structure is present? Another question. In case of the bryophyta, homosporous spores are present. Homosporous means what? After the sporic meons, the spores present. All these are the spores, these are the similar type in bryophyta. But in case of the pterodophyta, we obtain two different types of this spore after sporic meonsis. In case of the siloxida and in case of the speno, silo and the speno, first and the third one. They consist of the homosporous spore, which is a very much common, right? Homosporous thing. So, so here the question will not be Question coming from the heterosporous. Under the lycopsida, two conditions are present: homosporous as well as the heterosporous. Example for the homosporous, lycopsida, and example for example for the heterosporous, slanginella. So, for the homo, lyco, lyco, uh, sorry, lycopodia. And for the hetero example is Silanginella. Similarly, when you compare this point with most advanced pteridophyta, that is Pteridopsida, again we have homosporous, which is a common present in the land fern, and in case of the heterosporous, which is an example of the aquatic fern, and even in aquatic fern also there is a presence of the heterosporous condition. Clear? Because see, we have to do this. Mostly homosporous condition present in land fern and heterosporous homo present in land fern and the hetero present in just one second. Just hold, just hold, okay? Hmm. So we already discussed this point. Heterosporous question banega. Homosporous question nahi hoga because it's a very common. And the common point is not a question nahi banega. Remember example for the heterosporous, all aquatic form, and one example, Silanginella. Those are showing heterosporous condition. Yeah, this point is clear, everyone. Any doubt? Any doubt? That said, we are talking about class one. It's not high recognized. We are not taking gametophytic structure, habit, habitat, because no question from that point. So we are not taking that structure material. Address. Okay. Yeah. Chalo. So next point, we are taking some unique examples. With respect to because we have talked about in case of the pteridophyta, two major examples. Number one, Silanginella, and the number second that is Dryopteris. 
Okay, so now we are taking some unique point of view. What condition present in Silanchinella and what condition present in case of the dry cell? Okay, chal So should I continue next sir? So please divide your page into two sections because now we are taking some common point of point which is important according to our neat examination. And we focus only two examples, Silanchinella and the dry cell. So please divide your page into two sections. These are the last point of the cellular phyta. And we are taking the two examples. Number one, Silanginella. So divide your page into two sections. Number one, we are talking about Silanchinella, and the number second, we are talking about the Dryopteris. Now, quickly tell me, Silanchinella is belonging to which class? Quickly tell me, Silanchinella is belonging to which class? Okay, so I have got it. Today is I'm getting so many problems due to this voice. Okay, and Dryopteris? Now your doubt is clear. So you have to remember only two examples. Mm -hmm. Silanchinella belonging to Lycopsida class and a Dryopteris, which is an example of the land fawn, which is belonging to Pteropsida class. So now we are taking the exactly main difference between Silanchinella and the Dryopteris. That is the last of Pteropsida. Okay, hello. I hope sound is okay now. So, so first of all, we are talking about Okay, now better. I just what you want because I just formal. I just erase this slide. Anyone, please take this uh, screenshot of your notebook, photo of your notebook, and share it. Okay. So now we are talking about phytic body, porophytic body, which is the dominant that is diploid one. So one question. So this porophytic body in case of this data, one. So first of all, we draw this porophytic body in case of this angelina. Please draw structure with this. So we have a present day these are the root. And these are the not a normal root, these are the advantageous root. It is cracking. First of all, cover the writing part, the next thing.
हाँ आई सेड जस्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कॉपी दी डायग्राम देने लेट्स में Hope our diagram is covered and explain some part because two question banta hai yahan se one is only rhizo four and the another one that is frond and another third one that is sorai what is meaning of sorai <coughs> so once you finish this diagram please tell me. Done. Okay, Ram Chandra. Uh, so first of all, we start with the Salangina explanation. Listen carefully, okay? In case of the Salangina, we are talking about sporophytic body, which is the dominant one. You know very well, Pterodophyta, Gymnosperm, and the Angiosperm. All these are the example of the Cormophyta. And what is this meaning of the cor well developed root? Well developed. That is true root, true stem, and the true leaf-like structures are present. In case of the Salangella. Now here we draw adventitious root. And what is meaning of the adventitious? Tell me. Tell me what is meaning of adventitious root. Three types of root: tap root, fibrous root, and the adventitious root. So what is meaning of adventitious root? What is meaning of adventitious root? Tell me what is meaning of adventitious root. Yes, yeah, yes. Root develops from this stem. Stem can be such a root develops from any part of the plant body except radical except radical root develops from any part means root can be developed from the stem root can be developed from the leaf portion anywhere except radical right it is arise from the any other part except radical that type of the root these are called as the adventitious root so please remember 
in case of selangela as well as in case of the dry arteries there is a presence of the adventitious root right first point now in case of the selangela there is a presence of the stem even there is a presence of the leaf but here we draw one very unique structure that is rhizophore and what is meaning of the rhizophore remember this point rhizophore it's a very unique structure which is present only and only in case of the selangela and what is the meaning of the rhizophore rhizophore basically these are the one new organ in new organ it's a new type of the organ which is the mixed structure of root and the stem so what is meaning of the rhizophore this is the mixed structure of root plus stem please underline this point one question from the rhizophore rhizophore it is a new organ which is present only and only in case of the selangela baki kahi pe bhi present nahi hota it is not present in algae it is not present in bryo gymno angio it is even it is not present in all terrestrial it is present only and only in case of the selangela and what is the meaning of the rhizophore rhizophore it is a new type of organ which is the mixture of which is the combination of root as well as this stem root plus stem it is a mixture mixed structure of root plus stem clear point yeah yeah this point is clear everyone what is meaning of rhizophore one question 100% coming from the rhizophore new organ new type of the organ which is present only and only in case of this selangela yes and these are the mixed structure of root plus stem done okay fine now we talk about in case of the dryopteries in case of the dryopteries you have to remember there is a presence of the rhizome could you please tell me what is the rhizome ginger it is example of the rhizome and we have Then, uh, an example from banana it is come again under it is come under the rhizome category. Certainly, it is also come under the rhizome category. What is the rhizome? It is a root part. It is the same part, or it is any other? It is a what part? It is a part of what? Yes, ginger it is come under this category. But what is the rhizome? Rhizome basically these are the underground stem. Yes, Asmita. Underground because the stem it is divided into three types. Underground. Aerial and the subaerial. So, if I am talking about the rhizome, rhizome basically these are underground stem. Please write down here. That is an example of the underground stem rhizome, right? Yeah, no, no screen is working. Okay. Just wait, just wait, just wait. okay so just we discuss rhizome rhizome nothing but these are the underground stem another one we are talking about dryopteries it is example of land fern so definitely it is belong into land fern and we know very well whenever we are talking about the land fern fern it have very attractive leaves so that's why in case of the dryopteries we are talking about frond and what is meaning of the frond frond nothing but large size leaf and due to their large size leaf basically such type of this uh, what we say such type of this dryopteries we can say it is example of the ornamental plant i'm repeating this point again we are talking about the dryopteries category in case of the dryopteries category roots are present that root it is called as the adventitious root rhizome be present hoga whenever we are talking about the rhizome rhizome basically these are the one underground stem again there is a presence of the leaf leaf it is called as the frond and that frond also called as a large leaf and due to this property definitely we can say these are the some example of the ornamental plant right? now here we discuss about the sorai yeah i know komal i know it is get stuck 
it's not for you it's for me also it is get stuck but i hope your diagram part is over <laughs> so now we are talking about that is part of this sorai and whenever we are talking about this sorai sorai nothing but it is a group of sporangia it's the group of sporangia so sorai it is not present in all pteridophyta these are the present only and only in case of the dryopteris that is called as the sorai ओके हमने देखो हमने एक पार्ट देखा था दैट इज स्ट्रोबिलस स्ट्रोबिलस मींस व्हाट इज अ कॉम्पैक्ट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द स्पोरेंजिया सिमिलरली हियर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द सोरा एंड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द सोरा सोरा नथिंग बट दिस आर द ग्रुप ऑफ स्पोरेंजिया ओके ग्रुप ऑफ स्पोरेंजिया या सो हैड यू क्लियर इज दिस एनी डाउट हैड यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द राइजोफोर व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ फ्रंट एंड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ सोरा थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स है राइजोफोर New organ combination of mixed structure of the root and the stem, which is present in Silanginella. While dry in case of Dryopteris, there is a presence of the frond. Frond nothing but these are the large leaf, and because of the large leaf, they know as a ornamental plant. Ornamental. And the another one that is Sorae. What is this Sorae? Sorae basically these are the group of Sporangia, which is present on leaf. हम आगे देखेंगे. It is specifically it is present toward the lower side. Yeah. so this point is clear everyone first point with respect to silanginella in case of dryopteris okay chalo now second point very simple that is difference between the silanginella and the dryopteris i'm just writing sd please write down means continue karna chat that is silanginella in case of dryopteris and the after the main body we are talking about sporangia and you know very well sporangia also these are the diploid in nature now when we are talking about this silanginella definitely there is a presence of this strobilus so in inside this strobilus inside this strobilus there is a presence of two different types of spore because we discussed silanginella it is example of the heterospore yes or no it is example of the heterospore so whenever we are talking about the heterospore inside this strobilus two part present honge number 1 there is a presence of the microsporophyll and the another one megasporophyll micro and the mega because silanginella it is example of the heterosporous condition and you know very well whenever we are talking about the microsporophyll it means that we are talking about male gamete yes we are talking about which part micro means what we are talking about the male gamete and these male gamete also called as microspore And ploidy level of the microspore that is haploid because normal condition is microsporophyll. It is consist of the microsporangia. Microsporangia they produce the microspore mother cell. Microspore mother cell undergo the sporic meiosis and finally they produce the microspore which is haploid level, ploidy level that is haploid. So simple meaning, heterosporous condition. Similarly, when you compare this point with megasporophyll. mega sporophyll nothing but we are talking about female gamete mega and this female gamete simply in other word also called as the mega spore they finally they produce the mega spore which is haploid in nature but here we are talking about what is the exactly number of microspore and the mega spore number ke bare mein baat kar rahe so remember this point whenever we are talking about the male gamete in case of the silanginella that is a microspore they produce in large number so microspore production production of microspore they are basically in large number gymnosperm mein bhi yahi hoga we'll discuss that part even in case of angiosperm also whatever we are talking about the microspore they produce in large number and to compensate that point female number female gamete or mega spore we produce at limited amount but here we are talking about the number of the mega spore in case of the silanginella only four mega spore get developed 
only four. That I've said, cylindrical is example of the heterosporous. Two different types of spores get formed: microspore, megaspore. Microspore number in high amount, while in megaspore they develop in very limited amount. Clear? Clear this point? Any doubt from this cylindrical? Please, if you have any doubt, you can ask me right now because we are talking about cylindrical. It is example of pteridophyta who produce heterosporous spores. So please write down in big word. They are condition. They are produce heterosporous spore, megaspore and microspore. Now we are talking about the dryopteris. And dryopteris they produce homospore, similar type of spore. Yeah, should I continue with the dryopteris? Similar point eh? because here we have to discuss on the sori. What is sori and where it is present? That's it. Okay. So now we continue this part with dryopteris. Second part. I hope, I hope you understand because screen is quite lagging. <laughs> so now we are talking about in case of the dryopteris. Under the dryopteris, now we are talking about there is a presence of the spore. And which type of the spores? Definitely they produce the homospores. Homosporous condition present in case of the dryopteris. Now we are talking about focus on the sori. Now what happened on the lower surface of the leaf, on lower surface, not upper surface, okay? On lower surface of leaf, sporangia it is present. Where this is present, it is toward the lower side. Because see, in case of the dryopteris, on the drochia, large size of the leaf, ornamental leaves, that is called as the frond. But toward the lower side, sporangia is present, right? And whenever we are talking about that group of sporangia, that group of sporangia, simply these are called as sori. Question. Simply these are called as the sori. Sori nothing but we are talking about group of sporangia. And where these are the present? These are the present toward the lower surface of the leaf, not upper. It is present on the lower surface. Clear this point? This point is clear, everyone. Bas itna hi yaad rakhna hai aapko. We are talking about the leaf on the leaf toward the lower side. Sporangia present. And that sporangia, when it is present in group, not compact structure, okay? When we use the compact, that time we discuss strobilus. Okay, when we are talking about group of sporangia which is present toward the lower side, that time we have to use the word sori. Clear? Okay. Now we are talking about one another question which is already asked in previous NEET examination. Basically, this sporangia is developed from what? Sporangia, even sori. So we are talking about that point. Okay. So what happened? Basically, whenever we are talking about presence of the placenta. See, placenta, these are the characteristic features of angiosperm. Okay? But here we are talking about placenta as a nutritive tissue. That's it. Hum aur kisi reference point se nahi le re. We are talking about placenta. Here the placenta present. But that placenta as a nutrition, nutritional point of view. So there is a presence of the placenta. And now what happened? From placenta, this placenta, so I'm talking about from placenta, sporangia, sporangia, again originated from placenta number one, there is origin of the sporangia, as well as from placenta, Sorai also get developed. Sorai also they get originated. Right? And along with that, we are talking about 
number third one which is a very unique and this point you will get in assignment also if you solve the assignment there is a development of one protective layer that protective layer simply these are called as the endosium endosium it is gate originated so placenta play very very important role in case of the dryopteris because they get originated total three part number one they develop this sporangia and you know very well sporangia further they develop they form a spore now the group of sporangia that is called as the sori so same sori also develop from the placenta and here we are talking about one protective layer that protective layer that is called as the endosium so what is the endosium endosium basically these are the one protective layer to protect the sori these are the protective layer of sori okay so whatever we are talking about this sori which is a group of sporangia around that sori a protective layer present hoga and that protective layer simply these are called as the endosium and that endosium also it is developed from the placenta clear this point any doubt any doubt i am repeating this point again please listen carefully very important in case of the dryopteris leaf present hoga leaf basically called as the frond because it is a large size leaf lower side of the leaf placenta present lower side of the leaf placenta present from that placenta sporangia get developed group of sporangia called as the sori okay group of sporangia because sori also they undergo the meiosis division and they produce the spore because dono ka function same hi hai group of sporangia that is called as the sori so sori further they develop the spores but such sporai they form they form a protective layer they covered with some protective layer that is called as the endosium and that endosium also it is get originated from placenta clear this point any doubt from the sori any doubt from the endosium any doubt from the placenta no doubt pooja shivangi asmita dipika clear okay chal chal now differentiation part is over that's it hume bas itna hi part dekhna tha so raha hai rhizophore and the frog that's it okay chal now next pattern we are talking about some unique example differentiation part is over okay now we are taking mam so placenta is a nutritive tissue present at the lower leaf surface ha pratyusha ha pratyusha placenta this see placenta these are the characteristic feature of the angiospermic plant because plus humne dekhenge hum aage chapter mein dekhenge placentation where the ovule will get uh, arise now there is a nucellus cell a synergid cell egg cell that is a different thing because placenta these are the characteristic feature of the angiospermic plant but here also placenta present which is act as a nutritive tissue which is present toward the lower side of the leaf so has done okay so this part is done now we are talking about the last point of this pterodophyta and there is a end of pterodophyta so we are taking some few important question according to your neat point of view so neat imp ek minute differentiation part over please draw one line now we are talking about some important question neat point of view neat mp question okay last 10 years ko hum thoda merge kar rahe now after all we are talking about what is meaning of the bird nest moss so one point here we are talking about we are taking the example in case of the selanginella because selanginella common example and maximum question coming from the selanginella so selanginella basically these are the one genus and here we are taking one species that is rupetris rupestris this langinella rupestris these are the one species these are also called as bird nest moss 
these are also called as the bird nest moth so we are talking about explanation why this rupes tree is called as the bird nest moth reason now what happen whenever we are talking about the selangela rupes tree these are the one example and under the dry condition during the dry condition if there is a water stress condition during that condition body of that species it is become brown body of that species it is become brown brown ho gaya matlab kaisa ho gaya it is look like a nest like structure and after the browning now that body it is get roll up now body it is get rolled up and now what happen after the rolling process now it is a form a brown ball like structure which is a look like a bird nest after the rolling now finally they formed brown ball like structure brown ball and such structure they are like to or similar to bird nest simple meaning so that's why selangela rupes tree these are called as the bird nest moss great question banega but these are the explanation why we say that is bird nest moss during the dry condition body get brown in color brown hone ke baad ye roll up hoga now after the roll up it is look like a bird nest it is a look like it's similar like it's a look like a bird nest so that's why it is called as the uh, selangela rupes tree also called as the bird nest moss clear clear this part okay yeah another question again from this lanchinilla and this question is already asked in need 2013 seed hybrid so remember this point selanginella these are the species selanginella these are the species where first time first time seed habit can observed first time okay seed habit so first time seed habit is present i am not talking about seed present remember gymnosperm and the angiosperm these are the two part of the plant kingdom where seeds are present pteridophyta me seed present nahi hota but we observe seed habit what is meaning of seed habit initially algae form then bryo form then pterido at the end of pterido suppose selangela these are the end of the pteridophyta and now inside this selangela scientists observe some feature they observe some characteristic ha from the from this selangela ab dheere dheere seed form hoga so now first time inside this selangela remember this point in pteridophyta seed habit is not present it is present only and only in case of this selangela right and what is the meaning of this seed habit simple meaning tendency to form a spear <laughs> sorry tendency to form a seed tendency to form a seed so where such seed habit is present it is present only and only in case of this lanjinella neat favorite question dekho humne lanjinella ke bare mein kya kya padha lanjinella they produce the heterospores spores are there again lanjinella they having this tubular structure lanjinella they observe the seed habit then this part tanvi now we are talking about the third question according to neat point of view simple question is why the pteridophyta why pteridophyta or pteridophytes they showed narrow why they are showing narrow geographical distribution why they are showing narrow geographical distribution could you tell me the answer if you know means pteridophyta is not present in everywhere they are very narrow limitations are there why why we say they, pre they present at the narrow geographical distribution due requirement of water very good swas is this any other reason 
half half answer is correct i want another, another more so definitely why pteridophyta because water first condition water required for fertilization first reason water required for the fertilization but but jo gametophytic body hoga after the fertilization zygote bana embryo bana sporophyte get formed spores get released and they produce the gametophytic body but that gametophytic body they required cool humid and the shaded environment and even they can grow in soil very good pratyusha dipika suhas so remember this point one first reason first reason definitely water is required for the fertilization but ye kaisa plant hai these are the vascular plant these are the land plant but whatever we are talking about gametophytes that gametophytes which is a haploid body they can survive they can survive under cool humid and as well as the shaded area so two drastic condition hai for the fertilization water required hai but to complete their uh, further cycle means sporophytic and the gametophytic life cycle they required cool humid and the shaded area so that's why that is a limitation pteridophyta har jagah pe present nahi hota it is present at very limited geographical area because for only for fertilization water is required only for fertilization right but when you talk about entire life cycle they require land they require the sandy area they require the cool area they require the humid area so that's why we can say they at grow at very very limited area clear clear this point okay so all this information about this selenginella now we am talking about the examples some unique example for the dryopteris so to so number fourth point now we are talking about in case of the dryopteris dryopteris it is example of the land fawn which is belonging to pteridopsida class now what happen in case of the dry un specific pattern first one we are talking about dryopteris they represent forget venation what is meaning of venation what is the meaning of venation arrangement of veins in leaf but dryopteris these are the very unique they are showing forget venation and what is meaning of the forget venation simple meaning is veins they never touch to leaf margin veins they are never touch to leaf margin they never touch to leaf margin normally kya hota hai when you talk about the leaf in case of the gymno and in case of the angio midrib present hoga now there is a presence of the venlets but in case of the dryopteris specific type of the venation is present wo kahi pe bhi present nahi hota in all pteridophyte it is only and only present in case of the dryopteris that is forget venation and what is meaning of forget venation veins are never touch to margin so quickly we draw the structure also suppose the leaf hai and inside the leaf now there is a presence of the veins so from the one point when it is get originated they are showing branching now they are showing branching like this but if you see ye kya hai all these are the veins but the veins they never touch to leaf margin they never touch to leaf margin such type of the characteristic features which is present only and only in case of the dryopteris baki kahi pe bhi present nahi hota clear this point yeah this point is clear what, what is meaning of this forget venation okay now i am talking about fifth condition that is again in case of the dryopteris second last when we we done so fifth example similarly we are talking about in case of the dryopteris in case of the dryopteris now there is a presence of one a specific structure that is circinate axis circinate axis 
also called as hyponasty also known as the hyponasty so what is meaning of this circinate taxis or hyponasty simple meaning in case of the dryopteris to protect the leaf affects growing process can be done hyponasty hyponasty means what hypo means lower side nasty means what bending right so what is meaning of the hyponasty bending towards lower side bending towards lower side and such type of this bending simply these are called as the uh, hyponasty also called as the circinate taxis and what is the function of such type of this mechanism we are talking about the function they can such type of this arrangement they can protect young leaf affects matlab kya ho raha hai simply rolling ho raha hai for example i'll, I'll tell you how ye maan lo ki leaf hai and these are the leaf tip so now this leaf tip they are showing rolling they get bent they bent towards the downward direction so now what happen due to that bending whatever that leaf apex region is there that is a leaf tip that leaf tip they easily get protect so jab tak leaf mature nahi hoga up to that region they follow the hyponasty mechanism they follow the circinate phytics it means that once uh, that young leaf is present so that young leaf tip they get roll they are showing bending towards the downward direction to protect the young leaf clear clear simple so directly question banega circinate phytics or the hypno hyponasty present in dryopteris no question what is the function but here we clear one function involvement of protection of the leaf tip okay and the last point of the pteridophyta number 6 which is already asked in previous neat examination prothallus what is meaning of the prothallus so again we are talking about in case of the dryopteris in case of this dryopteris whatever the spores get formed spores basically these are the haploid in nature these spores undergo the process of germination spores are present and under the favorable condition spores undergo the process of germination and you know very well after the germination there is a formation of one body that body it is called as the gametophytic body which is haploid in nature but these gametophytic body it has some alternate name these are also called as the prothallus which is a very much unique only and only present in case of the dryopteris which structure prothallus please remember this point humne pehle discuss kiya tha thallus structure we know that is thallus thallus means what thallus nothing but these are the body organization where these are the present these are the presenting algae that's why algae also called as the thallophyta because algae these are the lower plant kingdom those are having body organization and that body organization is very simple and such type of this body organization simply these are called as the thallus ek minute iski dikha de but in case of the dryopteris we are talking about the prothallus and what is meaning of the prothallus prothallus means gametophytic body gametophytic body that is called as the prothallus and if i want to write down some information about the gametophytic body or the prothallus basically the prothallus first point these are the flat and the green color structure flat and the green color structure another one these gametophytic body or the prothallus they are showing independent existence they are showing independent existence so basically these are the showing 
independent exists because green color is and they are free living that's why it will be showing independent existence and the another third characteristic which is in which is come under the prothallus basically it is example of the monoecious and what is the meaning of the monoecious means male as well as the female both sex organ present on same plant present on the same plant body so definitely see humne pehle dekha tha in case of the bryophyta monoecious condition is very much common exception case marchensia but whenever we are talking about the dryopteris dryopteris they form a gametophytic body such gametophytic body these are called as the prothallus i'm not talking about the thallus thallus it is a unique word which is used in algae here we are talking about the prothallus prothallus which is characteristic features only and only present in dryopteris baki kahi pe bhi present nahi hota such prothallus these are the green in color that's why they are showing independent existence and these are the example of the monoecious plant where both male that is anthidium as well as the female that is archegonium present on same gametophytic body clear yes any doubt from today's class with this we end entire pterodophyta any doubt from today's class i know thoda sa pterodophyta thoda sa complicated hai but you have to revise this part again and again no doubt okay chalo so with this we end today's session and i declare that is we covered the pterodophyta entirely अब थोड़ा सा पार्ट बचा है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू जिम्नोस पर विल कंटिन्यू इन नेक्स्ट वीक नेक्स्ट वीक मीन्स आई थिंक फ्रॉम टुमारो ओके चलो बाय बाय टेक केयर सिलेबस फॉर द नेक्स्ट टेस्ट ब्रायोफाइटा सो प्लीज कीप गोइंग ऑन एंड हैप्पी संडे एंड